Promises are a core concept in computer science and they are one of the main building blocks of modern JavaScript development. Conceptually, a promise represents the eventual completion or failure of an asynchronous operation. Due to the non-blocking nature of the JavaScript environment and the asynchronous implication of working with the DOM or with the network, promises are vastly used in the front-end world. Since they are so popular, let's make sure we know our basics and spend the next few minutes looking at the Promise API JavaScript is offering. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. In a new JavaScript file, I'll define a function called long running task which accepts an argument called seconds. We'll be using this function to generate promises for various scenarios later, and the seconds property will allow us to define custom wait times until the promise is resolved. Promises are objects, and we'll use the new keyword to call the constructor and get a new instance. As you probably know, in real-life scenarios, you'd have something like a REST API call generating a future operation, but for our example, we'll simply use the setTimeout function to simulate delays. The setTimeout accepts a callback as an argument, which will be executed once the wait time has passed. In here, we'll call the result method to fulfill the promise with the hello string value. Exceptions and errors can also happen in a promise, and we'll look at those scenarios in a second. First, however, I'm defining a start function, which will be able to call from the console to trigger the whole logic. When the promise is settled, the callback registered in the then clause will be executed and will simply print out a message. To outline the async nature of this code, let's also print out a string right after the work we did with the promise. Okay, next, if we go and test this, it should not come as a surprise that when you call the start function, the text we printed when the promise results will be displayed second. To understand a bit better why this is happening, let's take a quick look at this basic example. So this is a function which is called when a button is clicked. The instructions will be executed one by one as follows. An internal loading flag is set to true, then a fetch from server method is called. Since this returns a promise, we are attaching a fulfilled handler using then. Finally, the execution will jump to line 7 and lock this button click for analytics purposes. At this point, the function call will exit and it will be removed from the call stack. What happens with the lines 4 and 5 then? Well, the JavaScript runtime relies on a mechanism called event loop. This is a construct that always listens to messages from a special queue and then might schedule code for execution. In our case, once the fetch from server promise is fulfilled, the event loop will pick up the completion message and schedules our callback to be executed whenever the JavaScript runtime can do so. As a quick side note, keep in mind that while the whole nature of front-end work is asynchronous, JavaScript is, by design, a synchronous environment relying on a single thread. It is the event loop which allows us to write code in this non-blocking manner. Back to our code, as a quick FYI, we can refactor the callback to look a little bit more clean and pass the console log function reference directly to the then method. Since we discussed the event loop and the synchronous nature of JavaScript, now it would be a good time to touch on another JavaScript popular construct. A sync await. While promises are powerful and allow you to code in a non-blocking manner, there are instances when it's more useful to treat promises like synchronous blocks and then execute your code sequentially, line by line. So, back to our code, we'll start by marking our start function as a sync. This is a must whenever you want to use the await keyword. In other words, you can await for promises only in functions clearly specified as asynchronous. There are exceptions to this rule, like the Node.js environment, which, in later versions, supports top-level await usage, but in most JavaScript scenarios, the async keyword is needed. With the sync await in place, you'll see that the two console logs are now printed in the same order they appear in the code. The option of making your code synchronous, while powerful, raises more interesting discussions. Many people see this async await feature as a replacement for the original way of working with promises. This is not at all the case. Yes, promises are a bit more boilerplate to work with, and you can run into callback hell situations, but all in all, they have very specific use cases and, most importantly, allow you to write non-blocking code. By comparison, using the await keyword will completely block your JavaScript thread until the promise is fulfilled. Back to the code, in the setTimeout function, I am causing the promise to get to a rejected state based on the number of seconds it receives as an argument. Again, this is just for demo purposes, so that I can outline that promises can have three different states, pending, when the promise still waits for a resolution, fulfilled, when the operation was successfully completed, and rejected, when the operation has failed. In real projects, you should always write your code in a manner that any type of unexpected exception or error is gracefully handled. 
when working with a sync await, your code runs in a sequential manner, so simply using a try-catch block will allow you to capture and handle any rejected promises. If a promise is rejected, a reason or error is provided, so we simply print that to the screen. In this video, I also use the settled word to describe promises. A settled promise is either in a fulfilled or in a rejected state, but never pending. The term resolved is also used for promises, and this means that the promise is either settled or it is going to match the eventual state of another promise, and further resolving or rejecting it has no effect. I know this might be a head scratcher, but knowing the three possible states of a promise, pending, fulfilled, or rejected, will be more than enough in your day to day work. Just like we did with the async await scenario, we can use the promise catch method to handle rejected promises. Since we refactored our implementation back to promises, this code is again non-blocking. As an FYI, promises also expose a finally method, which will be executed when the promise is settled, regardless of it failing or not. With some of the basics out of the way, let's now look at some other interesting scenarios. One thing you'll always have to do in a real project is handle multiple promises at the same time and perform various operations based on the status of the entire group of objects. Back to the code, I made some small adjustments to our task function and then I'm creating a list of promises. Think of this like a list of separate requests to the server or a list of files that need to be opened. Sure, you can handle each request individually, but what happens if the result of one promise depends on the result of a different one? The easiest way to handle such scenarios is to use the promise all method, which accepts a list of objects and returns a promise which will be either fulfilled when all promises are fulfilled or will be rejected if any of the promises are rejected. Okay, if you run this code in the terminal, you'll see that after some time, our callback method will be called and it received the three messages the promises resolved to. As a small side note, you can pass non-promise values in the promise all array and those values will be directly evaluated as fulfilled operations. Let's go back to the async await comparison for a second. We have here three promises, each taking around two seconds to settle. So these three will run quote unquote in parallel and we can expect that the promise all callback will be executed after around two seconds. If we were to use a sync await and make all these calls run in a synchronized manner, line by line, we would have had to wait around six seconds until we get all three results. So always think about your use cases before deciding which approach you'll use because a small decision here could have a big impact on your application performance. Back to the code, I made one of those array promises fail, so, as I mentioned, whenever a promise from the array is rejected, the resulting promise all will be rejected as well. While this is useful, in real-world scenarios you might actually want to continue the execution and get the resulting list of fulfilled or rejected results. We can use the all settled method for that, but the options don't stop here. The promise any method, for instance, will allow us to get a promise which will fulfill whenever the first promise in the array fulfills. There are other options as well, like the promise race for instance, so all in all, the power of working with promises should be clear to you. If you've made it this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. This concludes our quick incursion into promises, I hope you found it useful and thank you for watching.